welcome to our service from St Mary's and St Barnabas this morning. It's great to have you join us, whether live or at some point at a later date. On this, the second Sunday of Easter, we continue to hear the stories of Jesus' resurrection. And so as we gather this morning, wherever we may be, shall we invite the Holy Spirit to meet with us and remind us of our unity together in him. Let's pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of Jesus and for his risen life. As we gather this morning, Holy Spirit, would you draw near to us and help us to know your presence with us, guiding and equipping us for all that you're calling us to do and to be. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to begin our service by singing our first song, Brother, Sister, Let Me Serve You. continue our service this morning let's remind ourselves of Christ's presence with us alleluia Christ is risen he is risen indeed alleluia the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said peace be with you then they were glad when they saw the Lord alleluia as we come before God and as we recognize his presence with us we're reminded of our own sinfulness, those times when we let him down. And so Jesus invites us to confess our sins to him. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. 
On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. We pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Collect for the second Sunday of Easter. Risen Christ, for whom no door is locked, no entrance barred, open the doors of our hearts that we may seek the good of others and walk the joyful road of sacrifice and peace. To the praise of God the Father. Amen. We're now going to have our readings read today by Jeanette McCormack from St Barnabas and by Sharon Elliott from St Mary's. Good morning. This morning's reading is taken from 1 Peter 1 verses 3 to 9. Praise to God for a living hope. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you. Who through faith and shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Amen. The Gospel reading comes from John chapter 20, starting at verse 19. Jesus appears to his disciples. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. 
Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. When I was growing up, my grandparents lived near to us, so we were able to see them on a regular basis. In fact, every week as we grew up, we would often spend an evening during the week playing card games or board games with them. And my gramps, as we used to call him, got quite a bit of a reputation for being Victor Meldrew. Didn't seem to matter what happened. At some point during the evening, we would hear the immortal words, I don't believe it, at whatever happened in the game. He, along with Thomas, couldn't believe what he was hearing. Thomas gets something of a bad rep. But these days, in the world of fake news, of the internet, where you have to be careful exactly what you pass on, we've all been caught out, I'm sure, by those pieces of news which turn out not to be true. In these times of doubt and disbelief, it can be hard to know in whom we can trust. So for each one of us, the question we face today is, can we trust that Jesus is really alive? And if we can, what does that mean for us today? All the rest of them have seen Jesus They've seen the risen Lord. And now Thomas is the only one who wasn't there. For a week, there is Thomas as the odd one out. I won't believe, he says, unless I see the nail marks in his hand and put the finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. It was unbelievable that someone, even Jesus, could come back to life again. Who had ever heard of such a thing? Especially after such a horrific death. No, it was clearly some mass hallucination. Something gone wrong with the rest of them. And yet... As the days went by, Thomas must have become more and more puzzled. They were absolutely determined that this was true. They who had been in despair were suddenly filled with excitement and no one else could prove otherwise. No body was forthcoming. The Romans Certainly, if they'd taken it, would have produced it, and so too the Jewish leaders. The disciples themselves clearly didn't have it. So, what was Thomas to believe? Indeed, as he was to find out later, the disciples would lay down their very lives to show that this story was true, each one dying rather than tell this story a different way. Arthur Conan Doyle famously put these words into the mouth of Sherlock Holmes. How often have I said to you, Watson, that when you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. The most logical explanation of all the events that happened in those few days was that Jesus was alive, and yet Thomas could barely begin to believe it. Unless he saw it for himself, how could he know it was true? And then Jesus appears to Thomas. Stop doubting and believe. Jesus invites Thomas to go on a journey of faith. I don't know if you've ever seen the film Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. In that film there's a scene 
were indeed required to take a leap of faith. A giant canyon looms in front of him, and there is no obvious way across. He steps out into the abyss and finds underneath him a bridge, invisible from where he stood, but hard and solid as rock. Jesus' disciples, each and every one of them, would be tested on this story. And they'd give their lives for the truth of it. In the end, Thomas himself died because he refused to stop proclaiming the good news that Jesus was alive. For each one of us, we too face this choice, the choice whether to believe in the resurrection, not just to believe it in our heads, but to act as though it's true in our hearts as well. Jesus invites each one of us to take a step of faith, to put our trust in him as risen Lord, to trust in his forgiveness of us and be bold in giving our life as a living sacrifice to God. What that looks like for each one of us in our moments of worry and doubt is to come to God again and put our trust in him. In those moments when we're tempted to do the wrong thing, ask for his help. In those moments when we worry about what to do next, to step out in faith, be bold, and proclaim the good news that Jesus is alive. John, in writing his gospel, records this. These stories are written so that you might believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Stop being a Victor Meldry and be an Indiana Jones. Stop doubting and believe. As we reflect on all that God has done for us, and as we put our trust in him afresh, we sing our next song. O oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Baby.
blazing sun shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the saints, my gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. Sessions led today by uh, Kate and Sarah. Dear, Dear Jesus, Jesus, thank you for our churches. Thank you that although we cannot be together in person currently, that your church can still meet together online. We thank you for the technological advances in the past few decades that have allowed this to be possible. Mm -hmm. Lord, we pray that your Easter message of hope may be shared to many through these online services who wouldn't normally enter a church building. Thank you for our homes. Lord, even though we may be grumpy at times that we can't leave our homes, may we appreciate the blessing of having a home. Lord, we pray for those whose homes aren't safe or happy places to live. Please help them to find a way to safety. We also pray for those who are struggling with their mental health while in lockdown. Lord, please be with them in their homes and gently nudge people to contact and support them. Thank you for key waxes and all for people whose jobs are really important at the moment. We pray your blessings on those whose jobs are often lowly paid and poorly regarded, but are so important, especially at the moment. We pray your blessing on all those mm -hmm. who are going out to do their jobs. No. Thank you for all the people who provide food for us. We thank you for and pray your blessings upon all the shop workers, lorry drivers, factory workers and farmers who are ensuring the food we all need is reaching the shops. Please help those who are struggling for food to be able to secure deliveries from the shops, government and food bank. Thank you for for NHS scientists and researchers. Well, we pray you will bless all those who work within the NHS, including the cleaners, healthcare assistants and porters to name but a few. Lord, we pray for the doctors and nurses on the front line. Please give them the wisdom, strength and the resources necessary to help as many people as possible safely. Lord, we thank you for scientists and researchers. We pray you will give them supernatural wisdom and speed as they discover more about this COVID-19 and try to create antibody tests, vaccines and cures. Please help people who have coronavirus. Lord, we pray for all those who are suffering from coronavirus. We pray for your healing and breath of life into them. We also pray for all those who are facing delays of treatment due to the pandemic. Lord, give them your peace and blessing as they wait. In particular, we pray for Jane P, Michael, Margaret T and Nicola. Please help the government. Lord, we pray that you will give our government and the advisers around them wisdom and compassion to know the best way forward in these uncertain times. Lord, please accept these prayers 
in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll finish with a prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and give us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we come towards the end of our service today, a couple of things from me just to remind you, if you haven't been getting our newsletter um, and would like to do so, uh, please do drop Rachel or I an email and we will be happy to um, add you to our distribution list for our services. Next Sunday, uh, we will be having another service at 10 a.m. Um, on YouTube as usual. And then in the afternoon, we'll be having our messy church via Zoom. Please do join us if you can. Uh, there's a list of items which uh, it'd be helpful to have to hand if you want to join in with the craft activities. And finally, please do join us for coffee after the service this morning. All the other things uh, about what's happening, including the items for food bank, are listed in our newsletter. So please do have a look at that. As we conclude our service this morning, we're going to sing our final song. Crown him with many crowns.
come to the end of our service today. Let's pray for God's blessing upon us as we go out into his world. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. As we reflect on all that God has done for us, maybe no, maybe no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs>